AMD just announced its much-anticipated Big Navi graphics card, with the Radeon RX 6800 priced at $579 and the Top End 6900 XT at $999, around 50% less than the similarly performing GeForce RTX 3090. While the performance seems solid, more or less on par with the competing RTX 30 series parts, there are a few things you ought to know about the new GPUs before you decide which one to buy. Big Navi performs better at 1440p compared to 4K. Although the Radeon RX 6000 graphics cards are capable 4K parts, they generally perform more consistently at 1440p compared to the rival GeForce RTX 30 series offerings. That is primarily because Nvidia's GPUs feature a wider bus, 320-bit for the RTX 3080 and 384-bit for the 3090, and GDDR6X memory both of which together offer significantly more bandwidth than the Navi 2X parts. Bandwidth matters more at higher resolution as you're constantly buffering in large texture assets to and from the VRAM buffer. The Radeon RX 6800 XT is the sweet spot and likely the next best seller. While all three GPUs are decent products, in terms of the price performance ratio, the RX 6800 XT takes the cake. You're getting RTX 3080 levels of performance and perhaps a bit more for $50 less at $649. Furthermore, the lack of availability of the RTX 30 series cards means that most RTX 3080s will sell $50 to $60 more than the MSRP of $699. The RX 6900 XT isn't a poor choice if you aren't strapped for money, but the RX 6800 is hard to recommend. You're getting an RTX 3070 competitor for potentially worse or similar ray tracing performance for an additional $79. Infinity Cache is the secret sauce and the substitute for a wider bus width as well as better ray tracing performance. No one believed that AMD would pack a whopping 128 megabytes of L3 cache, aka Infinity Cache with its big Navi graphics cards. There were rumors, sure, but it seemed way too out there. This massive cache buffer is similar to the game cache on the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. By caching large amounts of data, it reduces the stress on the relatively smaller 256-bit bus and GDDR6 memory. It also is instrumental in ray tracing as ray slash box intersection data tends to be quite substantial, often choking these smaller L0 and L1 caches that are private to one or more compute units. The Radeon RX 6000 graphics cards will work best when combined with the Ryzen 5000 CPUs, thanks to smart memory access. SMA The Radeon RX 6000 GPUs feature something AMD called Smart Memory Access. AMD's Smart Memory Access improves gaming performance by up to 11%. But how does Smart Memory Access work? When you are using an all-AMD system with a Ryzen 5000 CPU and a Radeon RX 6000 graphics card, the CPU has direct access to the GPU's memory subsystem via the PCIe 4.0 lanes. The exact functioning isn't clear, but it would seem that this is a proprietary solution similar to AMD's Smart Shift on Renoir notebooks, which allows the 500 series chipsets to bring the GPU and CPU closer to each other, thereby reducing overhead and latency. Introducing Rage Mode. No, it's not auto overclocking. That is a different feature. One of the new features introduced with the Radeon RX 6000 GPUs is Rage Mode. It boosts performance by around 5-7% to by providing the GPU with higher boosting headroom. And no, it's not auto overclocking. It doesn't affect the base or boost clocks. It simply increases the power limits of the GPU by a small amount, allowing it to boost higher and stay there for larger intervals similar to how Precision Boost Overdrive PBO, works on the Ryzen CPUs. NVIDIA's RTX 30 series Ampere graphics cards will likely be slightly better at ray tracing. NVIDIA's RTX 30 series GPUs, thanks to the second gen RT cores, will most likely be better at accelerating the ray tracing algorithm compared to the Navi 2X parts. This is due to two reasons. While NVIDIA uses its RT cores for both BVH acceleration and ray triangle intersection, AMD relies on its RT units for only the latter. The base shaders, or SIMDs, are used for the former. Furthermore, NVIDIA's Ampere architecture can run its RT cores, shaders, and tensor cores asynchronously. 
It's unclear whether AMD's RT units can do the same, but if they're anything like the Xbox Series X's GPU, they'll have a common data path with the texture units, meaning only one of them can run per cycle. At the same time, some games will likely see the RDNA 2 parts perform on par or even better than the RTX 3080 or 3090, even with ray tracing turned on. AMD is working on a DLSS alternative to improve performance with ray tracing turned on. AMD has also informed the press that it's working on an alternative to NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling algorithm, one that will be open source and likely benefit from the massive infinity cache on the big Navi GPUs. From what I can tell, it will be based on direct ML. AMD is going to pair this super resolution technology with the rest of its Fidelity FX tools, such as the Denoiser, CAS, Optimized AO, and SSR to further improve both image quality and performance. The performance should be in line with traditional upscaling technologies allowing doubling of input resolution. That will be sufficient to allow the RX 6800 XT and 6900 XT to run even the most taxing games at 4K Ultra with ray tracing turned on. The Radeon RX 6800 series will be available starting 18th of November. The Radeon RX 6800 and 6800 XT will hit retail starting on the 18th of November. Keep in mind that these are the launch dates for the reference cards, while third-party board partner GPUs will land sometime in December. It's worth noting that the AIB partner cards will come with higher in-game boost clocks, resulting in 7-12% to better performance compared to the reference models. The Radeon RX 6900 XT will launch on the 8th of December and be an AMD exclusive for a month. The flagship card, the Radeon RX 6900 XT, is slated to hit stores on the 8th of December, but will only see the reference cards for the time being. The board partner variants are set to launch in January of 2021. As with the RX 6800 series, it may be worth waiting for these models as they'll likely be faster while costing marginally more. The Radeon RX 6700 series will land in 2021 and come without the Infinity Cache. The budget range Radeon RX 6700 and 6700 XT will arrive sometime in 1H 2021, without the Infinity Cache. Knowing how expensive SRAM is and targeted resolutions for these parts are 1080p and 1440p, they'll come with a 192-bit bus and the same number of compute units as their predecessors, 5700 and 5700 XT. They might feature a smaller infinity cache of around 64 megabytes, but not the whole 128 megabytes. Supply for the Radeon RX 6800 series should be ample. Unlike NVIDIA's RTX 3080 and 3090, there should be enough supply for the Radeon RX 6800 and 6800 XT in November itself, with the board partner launch in December further reinforcing inventory. As far as the Radeon RX 6900 XT is concerned, we'll only be seeing the reference cards for the time being. Supply will be somewhat constrained, but not as much as the RTX 3090, seeing that not many people line up to buy a $999 graphics card that shouldn't be a problem though. The Radeon RX 6000 series graphics cards are more power efficient than the rival Nvidia RTX 30 series. For the first time since, well, forever, AMD's GPU lineup is more power efficient than the rival GeForce stack. Both the RX 6800 XT and 6900 XT have a TBP of 300 watts, while the RTX 3080 has a rated TBP of 320 watts. The RTX 3090 has a TBP of 350 watts. In reality, both the Ampere cards draw close to 400 watts under load. It'll be interesting to see how much the big Navi cards draw under load. Lower thermals, noise, and fewer complications. The Radeon RX 6000 series cards are not only more power efficient, but they will also have lower thermals, run quieter, and come in a smaller form factor. This isn't just because of the lower TDP, but the use of GDDR6 memory which runs much cooler compared to the GDDR6X standard employed by Nvidia and Micron. Furthermore, the use of back drilling, more power phases, and other complicated techniques to reduce interlayered noise also adds to the overall thermals. The Big Navi graphics cards will most likely come in dual slot widths, with the RX 6900 XT maxing out at 2.5 slot width. 
Unlike the GeForce RTX 3080 and 3090, which are triple slot cards for most AIB partner cards, the Radeon RX 6800 XT won't exceed the dual slot factor for most board partner models, while the RX 6900 XT will max out at 2.5 slot width. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.